Welcome to our service of worship for the fourth Sunday of Advent, the 20th of December. Some notices to keep your mind around. Our Christmas services are happening. We will have an online service, but we have services in person as well. Starting with the children's service at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve, that's the 24th for those who don't know. And then at half past six that evening, we will have a small Christmas Eve service for those who may not be able to make a Christmas morning service. And then on Christmas Day itself, we have our service at nine o'clock in the church grounds. If it rains, we will have two services in the hall, one at 7.30 and one at 9.30. For all of those services, please phone the church office and book a place. We need to have those registers made the regulations for being COVID compliant demand it. And just a reminder that our office closes from Christmas Eve through till the 4th of January. So let us turn our attention to God and his word. In Psalm 89, David writes, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. And so as we begin our service, turning to singing God's praises, let us pray. Lord God, thank you that you are with us, that you are present wherever we are, and that as we meet in your name, you will bless us. And so, Lord, we lift our voices to praise your name and give you glory. Amen. The first reading is from, the, is from Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 27. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mastery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the good news contained in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the Gospel of Christ. One, two, three, four. Come to pierce our darkness Joy of your heart Come to chase our gloom Star of the morning A new day dawning Make our hearts a home Worship the King Come see His brightness Worship the King His wondrous town Jesus our King Is born today We welcome you in Come see his bride. 
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Send your Holy Spirit upon us now, that we may know you better and free us with boldness to proclaim and live the full gospel message for the glory of the Father. Amen. There's a lovely uh, little chorus, a Zimbabwean one in origin. There's no one like Jesus, there's no one like him, there's no one like Jesus. And Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons and daughters. God chose Mary to bring about this time and sent the angel Gabriel with this greeting. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary is highly favored because she is a recipient of God's grace. Mary, a virgin, will give birth to a son and his name would be Jesus. A similar, similar combination of words occurs in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Paul writes there that we have been chosen, and I quote, to be adopted as God's sons and daughters through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. And the Greek words there for highly favored um, are the same as used in Luke's Gospel. Um, and that means that we too, all of us, are highly favored by God and are recipients of God's grace and favor. Mary was, however, concerned as to how this impossible task would come to pass. The angel's response was very simple, the Lord is with you. We start most of our services with the Lord be with you and there is the response and also with you. And in a way that is implying that we are together for a great experience of God meeting us and sending us out with our tasks. Let's come to these services or to our quiet times with expectation every time that this would happen. Mary's task was enormous. The child she was to give birth to was like no one before. Just look at his names. He would be given the name Jesus. That means that he will save his people from their sins. Luke goes on to say, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. The term Son of the Most High means that he shares equality with God. His reign will be eternal. And for Mary to be singled out to be the birth mother of this child must have been a daunting challenge. Our encounter with Jesus should be a life transforming experience that makes us so excited to share Jesus with others. This is not always true for us all the time. It's not a once and for all experience, but an ongoing walk with Jesus. I grew up in the church with my parents who were involved and regular attenders at church. But through that time, I did not know Jesus. To mention Jesus in church was okay for me, but to speak about him outside of church services was embarrassing. In fact, I probably need to say that I was ashamed of Jesus. Accepting Jesus into my life changed this, and that was close to the age of 21. Singing, praying and talking about Jesus then became part of my life. Paul's encounter with Jesus was life transforming for him. From being a persecutor of Christians, trying to stop the church from functioning, to a proclaimer 
of Jesus Christ, Paul changed. We read in Romans 16.25 at the end of that amazing letter to the Romans, Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Jesus changed Paul's life. He fell to the ground, as we read in Acts chapter 9, verses 4 to 6, and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul asked, Who are you, Lord? And the voice came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Paul, as we come to the end of that letter to the Romans in chapter 16, our reading today, wants believers to be established by the truth of the gospel. Hence this letter to the Romans. He spends much time in explaining God's plan of salvation so that they would be established, stand firm in their faith, and then also share the truth with the lost. He uses the words in that ending of his letter, my gospel. Now this is not something he created, but as we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 8 to 9, he explains what his gospel is. And I quote, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, this is my gospel. And so Jesus means everything to Paul. I look at various passages from Romans chapter 1 verse 16 first of all. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 23 and 24 he says, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. And then also in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. On long car journeys, Alison reads a book to me while I drive. Our latest read was published in 2019 about Archbishop Ben Kwashi of Jos, Nigeria. He was for 13 years uh, the chairman of SOMA International, retired last year from SOMA at our meeting in Melbourne. I was privileged to meet with him almost every year during that period. We hosted him and his wife Gloria in our home and I visited their home in Jos for our SOMA board meeting and missions. Archbishop Ben is totally convinced about Jesus, who can meet every need. He stood firm in faith when his home was burned. While away from his home, his wife was brutally attacked. The attackers were looking for Archbishop Ben. Attackers came another time to kill him. God intervened when a, with a gun to his head. He and Gloria lay on the floor praying. He fearlessly proclaims justice and, and is a reconciler. One does not often find an archbishop being such a powerful evangelist, proclaiming the gospel at all times. He courageously speaks truth to power. And I quote, Until my time is up, he said, I will live each moment for the gospel, which is the hope of Africa and the world. Some of the stories I had heard firsthand, but was again challenged in reading this book about my ministry and life in Christ. That reliance on Jesus and living for Him and standing firm in the faith at all times and being all for Jesus at times seems to be a great task, but for God. Mary, facing the impossible, received the word from the angel, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, Luke 1.35. John in his Gospel in chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 writes, Yet to all who received him, that is Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. And Paul, in a way, follows this up by writing in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. The Holy Spirit came upon those apostles in the early days, in Acts, they were empowered to be witnesses, not just some of the time, but all the time. Archbishop Ben is an amazing example of this. We have received the same power to be witnesses. If nothing is impossible with God, think about this Advent which comes to an end on this Sunday. End this Advent season by receiving Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Submit to God's plan for your life as Mary did. Be about the unfinished task of proclaiming the gospel so that all nations might believe and obey Jesus. Our Alpha courses should continue to grow in numbers if we look at the COVID time and the state of our world and country. They are people who do not know Jesus. They are lost. Stand firm at all times on the truth of the gospel. Be committed this Christmas and into 2021 to the one, Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we pray. Father, you have sent Jesus to be our Savior, and through him, the Holy Spirit, to empower us for witness and service. Send more of your Holy Spirit and grant us boldness in completing the task you have given to each of us. Amen. Good morning. The Lord be with you. We continue in prayer to our God and Father. In this season of Advent, Father, we rejoice in the fact that you, Lord Jesus, are God with us, Emmanuel. Holy Spirit of God, give us expectant hearts as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ our Saviour in our midst. Thank you for the opportunity to do so in our carol service last week and hear afresh and be reminded of your great story of salvation. Lord God, you require us to have clean hands and pure hearts and so we pray, together the collect of purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, who said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. So we call to mind our sins and confess together, knowing that we do fail and fall short of what you require. But knowing that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so we pray together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that you have sinned against, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Sovereign Lord, as we look at the world around us, we see trouble, strife, hopelessness and despair. And as you wept over Jerusalem, you must weep when you see all that is happening in our world. 
we cry out to you and ask that we, your church, the body of Christ, be instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's doubt, faith. In this time of global unsettledness with COVID-19 making ripples and waves everywhere, we welcome your presence and allow you to bring us healing, peace, comfort and hope. We hold up to you for your healing grace, all who are suffering in any way. We ask too, Father, that all the citizens of the country will act responsibly towards others in this time of Christmas season as they celebrate Christmas and on their holidays. Father, we hold up to you all who are suffering without work, without food, without clothing, especially during this devastating effect of the coronavirus, and ask that you will provide for them. Stir our hearts to respond and do what we can wherever we are. Father Almighty, we pray for the leaders both in your church and our government. We ask for wisdom and courage for each of them. Especially we pray for President Ramaphosa. Give him strength, wisdom, encouragement and hope as he leads the country in a very challenging time. We thank you, Lord, for the life and ministry of the church and pray your blessing on Bishop Steve, Archbishop Tabo, and on our own clergy and leaders in St. Luke's. We pray that your will be done and your kingdom come in us and through us. Gracious Lord, again we rejoice in what you are doing in your world during the time of the coronavirus, the isolation and the lockdown, that you are making all things new just as you promised. And so we pray for our country, in fact the whole continent of Africa as we say, God bless Africa, God her children, guide her leaders, and give her peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And so as we end our time together, we pray, with love and compassion, come Lord Jesus, with judgment and mercy, come Lord Jesus, in power and glory, come Lord Jesus, in wisdom and truth, come Lord Jesus. Now may God the Father, judge all merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. May God the Holy Spirit, make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you carry in your heart this day and always. Amen.
Bring 